actually thought that Sandy Hook would have been we the thing did. that moved Congress. How, when 26 and 7 year old babies were slaughtered and they did not act and they did not act. It is time for Congress to act. Within the span of a week, 18 people have died as the result of mass shootings. In Colorado, the suspect used an assault weapon he got just six days before the attack. Be because of his history, he probably wouldn't have passed a background check. In Georgia, the suspect got his weapon just hours before he opened fire. Despite all of that, common sense gun laws like longer waiting periods, background checks, and a ban on assault weapons are still highly partisan and contentious issues. Well, at least in Congress they are. New polling shows Americans on both sides of this issue are open to some sort of gun control policy. 84% of voters support expanding background checks. Senate Democrats have vowed to move forward with bills that would do just that. But convincing enough Republicans to get on board appears to be an uphill battle. Many Republicans have actually supported expanding access to firearms in their home states. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki told reporters today that congressional action may take time, but there may be other tools the president can use. If we want something to be permanent, if we want it to be lasting, we need it to be legislation. He certainly believes that, but there are also uh, executive actions under consideration uh, that we will continue working through internally, and there's lots of levers you can take, obviously, as president and vice president. Joining us now is Nicole Hockley, whose son Dylan was one of the first graders killed at the Sandy Hook school shooting. Nicole is co-founder and managing director of Sandy Hook Promise. Nicole, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Thank you for having me. So every time there's a mass shooting, we talk about gun safety reform and then nothing happens. And I know I remember back when Newtown happened, a lot of people said, this is the moment when we're going to be able to do something on this issue because these are babies, to Kamala Harris's point. As someone who's experienced the pain of gun violence firsthand, are you hopeful in this moment that it might be different this time? I, I am always hopeful because I know that the solutions uh, in terms of community action and policy action are well within our reach. Um, what I am, uh, hesitant for, but very hopeful for, is that Congress will finally take action. Things like universal background checks I've been fighting for for eight years now. Um, and it's, you know, it passed in the House before and it stalled in the Senate. This time again, it's passed in the House and now we're waiting for the Senate to take action. And I'm hopeful that as these polls continue to show that Americans have been supportive of this policy for eight years constantly, mm -hmm. Perhaps the senators can finally listen to their own constituents and and pass universal background checks. What motivates you every day to continue, um, you know, pushing the, the Congress folks on this issue? Obviously, you know, we, we go through this debate every time and, you know, every time there's advocates and people have experienced this firsthand that come forward and say, look, these are the, the solutions to this issue. Putting up obstacles, every single obstacle you put up in front of someone who wants to commit an act in violence is chances, more chances that they'll, they'll be caught by law enforcement or um, they won't actually carry that action out. Um, so what do you say to people who are cynical? Because you said you were, you're able to stay hopeful. Who, what do, what's your message for people that are, that are cynical and just kind of throw up their hands when this issue comes back around? Throwing up your hands is the worst possible thing that you can do. I think part of the problem and the reason it hasn't moved enough in the Capitol is because of that throwing up the hands, of because of this apathy that can overtake people. If you constantly think something's not going to happen, then you stop fighting for it. And when you stop fighting for it, you're allowing it to continue to happen. That that passivity cannot be where we where we are as a country. When I look at the amazing strides that we've made with the coronavirus and curbing that and, and, and leading towards a way that's going to save tens of thousands of lives going forward. We can totally do the same for gun violence as well. This, that is a public health issue. That is an epidemic that is taking tens of thousands of people every year. The solutions are there. And if we get past our politics and our personal agendas and put people's lives and safety first, 
that's the common platform on which we can build. In addition to background checks for most gun sales um, that have passed the House and are heading to the Senate, what other types of gun control uh, legislation and policy do you think uh, should be up for discussion and potentially uh, brought up for a vote in the House or the Senate? Well, I think there's a lot of action that we can do federally as well as within the states. Um, my, my group, Sandy Hook Promise, we advocate for extremist protection orders. Uh, that is a very sensible gun safety piece of legislation that basically says if someone is in crisis or if someone is posing a risk to themselves or others, that family member, law enforcement, through a, a, a very judicial due process can have those firearms or the ability to purchase firearms temporarily removed from that person until they are deemed fit to have it back. That makes a lot of sense, not only for mass shooters, um, as we've seen it just within the last week, but also in the event of suicide. If someone is that desperate to get a gun in that moment, having uh, a, a waiting time for a background check or having an extremist protection order that can say, let's make sure that you're okay before you have this firearm. So it's not infringing on your Second Amendment rights. It's about ensuring that the person who is getting the gun is 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 safe uh, to do so. So those are simple things. I also advocate for high capacity magazine limits. Um, I have yet to hear a logical argument as to why they are needed by civilians. Um, so that's something that you know would remove some of the lethality of some of the weapons. How many bullets can go out at such velocity? So we mentioned uh, the cynics, the people that throw up their hands, but there's also moderate Democrats like Joe Manchin who are also uh, obstacles to gun safety reform legislation becoming law. What's your message for senators like Joe Manchin? Well, I've worked very closely with Joe Manchin. Uh, in, in 2013, he was uh, a champion for the Manchin-Toomey bill around universal background checks. He is... Um, He's got a big heart. I believe he still has a picture of my son on his wall that he looks at every day and reminds about the life that's, that's lost and how he has a responsibility to help fight for things like universal background checks. We need bipartisan support. You need people like um, Senator Manchin. We need people, we need Republicans to come forward on this and support this legislation that can truly save lives going forward. Nicole Hockley, thank you so much for being here and for sharing your story uh, and your continued work on this important issue. Please stay safe. Hi, I'm Zerlina Maxwell. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more from Zerlina by clicking any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thanks for watching.